Hi guys, Big Rig 150 here. Uh, coming to you. I'm sorry I haven't gotten something out earlier. Uh, it's just sometimes I, it's hard uh, coming up with something new and uh, trying to figure what you guys would want to hear about. Uh, so I want you to do me a favor. I would like you to uh, share, like, and leave a, leave a comment. Um, and in the comment section, I, I want things that you would be interested in. Um, I got a million thoughts that run through my mind every day, and it's, it's hard for me to come up with uh, what everybody else wants. Uh, I want to have something that's interesting for everybody. So please leave the comment. Like like you, you have been doing. Share it to everybody. Subscribe. Um, so you get... Uh, where when I do upload the videos um, Now to get on to today's topic. I want to talk about um, in, in essence You come into a, to the dealership When you come to the dealership You should do your homework And what I mean by homework is You should have ideas to what vehicle you want you want Okay, um, you see a car on the road, an Explorer, uh, a Denali, something along those lines. First thing you should really do is go online and see what the price of those vehicles are. People are more sticker shocked on what the price of cars are today than they ever have been. Uh, to find a car for under twenty thousand dollars, new mind you, it is almost unheard of. Now that's before um, manufacturers' discounts and everything else. But still, finding a car that's under four hundred dollars a month uh, in today's day and age, that's very hard. So you got to do your research. You should know how much a car is. Go on the manufacturer's website. Most manufacturer websites actually have uh, a build your own. So you can actually build a car to what you want it to be. Um, obviously not every dealership is going to have exactly that, but at least get an idea what you want. So make what you want. Um, you know, do your research. You know, you... You see, I'll use three examples. Um, the Ford Escape, the Nissan Rogue, and the Honda CRV. All the same style car. Now, you'll be like, okay, Big Rick, where, where do I do my research? The first place you do your research, believe it or not, it's not sites that I particularly like, but they do have some good valid points. First is Edmonds, and the second is Consumer Reports. Now, if you really want to get into where a good source is, it's, it's Motor Trend. Motor Trend is probably the least biased um, publication out there on the vehicles. Um, I've read numerous articles of theirs, and I find them to be extremely um, useful and helpful. What I mean by that is, they look at the car, drive the car, and they drive the cars for two, three thousand miles. Uh, these are sometimes um, what are pr promotional cars or manufactured demos. So you'll get a car that might have a little bit more bells and whistles or not as much, but it's from the manufacturer itself. So these are pre production cars sometimes. Um, like when the 2019s come out, they come out, those should be coming out around this time. So by November, most of your 19 should be starting to hit the, the dealerships. Motor Trend, um, Car and Driver, Edmonds, uh, Consumer Reports, they get those cars a little bit early because they get those pre-production ones. They'll be the first ones that they produce because sometimes there's in between 
years, they'll decide we want to do this, that, and the other thing. That's how that works. So, do your research on those sites because they're, they're going to be um, some of the sites that really give you some answers. I, I Edmonds and Consumer Reports, they use sometimes people and which is great because it's it's actual um, feedback from the customers. Where it's not so great is when they have sometimes a salesman didn't teach them the right things about the car. I remember one people loved the the Ford Edge, loved it, loved it, loved it. I couldn't sell enough of them. Some people say, "Well, Consumer Reports didn't give us such a good review." And I was like, why? She's like, well, it was hard for for people to to use the sink. I was like, that's the salesman's issue. A salesman's going to take five minutes, teach it to you. And if you're not happy, tell you to come back. I would rather a customer come back five, six, seven times on something that they're not sure of and making it sure that they know it beforehand so that they know. Because in today's day and age, a salesman is done on a review and a survey sent in from the manufacturer. Those two things are more important to a salesman than ever before. So do your research. Um, there's a lot of, lot of ways of doing research. Uh, there was a study about four years ago that says, on average, a... Consumer will do 11 hours of research before they step foot into a dealership. 11 hours. That's, that's a long time to be looking up cars. Do your research though. Uh, do you need to do 11 hours? I don't think so. But once you find the car that you, that you really like, and you see the sticker price, the MSRP that is from... Edmund, Cars Guru, any of these millions of sites out there that show you a true MSRP of the car. Okay? Ford Explorers, I'll give you an example. They range from roughly $33,000 up to $55,000. So when somebody says they want an Explorer, I'm going to go for the middle of the pack. I'm going to go for a $45,000 Explorer. Well, that's too much for me. Well, what are you looking for? You just say you're looking for an Explorer. Let me know what you're looking for. And if you say you want leather, you want this, you want the other thing, you're still looking at almost a $45,000 car. Oh, well, True Car says they can get it for this. Well, True Car is also not showing you what an MSRP is. Or are you leasing? Because leasing is a little different. Sometimes a lease works a little bit into your favor if it's um, if you get a little bit more equipment sometimes it, it lease is a little bit better because those are sometimes the cars that the manufacturers wants to f push out there. Now big rig there's all these specials out there $199 specials that we see on online from from dealerships. Yes, there are. They're also seven thousand dollars down. Twenty-four month. Your minimum miles. And sometimes have rebates that you may not qualify for. So you gotta you gotta read. You gotta read the small print. Now, when you go into the dealership, salesman's gonna ask you, how's your credit? What are you trading in? Things along those lines. Be truthful with them. What I mean by that is, don't say, well, it's all right. Well, what's all right? You know? Customer asks you about your, uh, salesman asks you about the trade. All right, what's your payment on this now? Payment's $400 a month. Okay. Do you have the car here? Nah, I left it home. Don't leave the trade home. That is the one thing. Yeah, we all heard about the horror stories years ago with the trades. Uh, 
See, I was gonna get the keys, go drive around the back, throw the keys up on the up on the roof. It's not like that anymore. The salesman wants you. This is gonna sound bad, but it's the truth. Wants you in and out as quickly as possible because guess what? The next customer who walks through that door is theirs. So sometimes they want to be in and out as quickly as possible. Now, that 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 sounds terrible. Not really. Do you want to spend all day or all week? Let's go now. Going from dealership to dealership, looking at cars? Or do you want to spend as little time in there as possible? A lot of people say they would rather get a root canal done with no Novocaine than sit at a car dealership to buy a car. You got to look at that. And as a salesman, I don't want you there for six, seven hours. I don't. I'll be happy to sit and chat and talk about anything but that's not going to be helpful because your time is more valuable than than my time on a Saturday I'm there from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. you don't want to be there from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. trying to buy a car it happens but you don't want to do that it's 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 not beneficial Again, your time is more important than mine. I will always say that to a customer. I'd rather you come in, see what we can do, see what your trade is, have everything lined up. Don't do this while I don't have the trade here. So we're wasting time. I could go look at my book and I could see the car is worth $2,000. Just looking at it. I look at the car. You know what? It's not in bad shape. Maybe I put another thousand dollars on that car. Instead of it being two thousand, three thousand. That puts you in the price range that you're looking for. And so you don't have to put in a, put as much money down. Know your credit also. What I mean by that is if I ask you, Mr. Smith, what's your credit? And you say, I don't know. First thing I'm going to do is say, okay, before we go any further, let's get a credit up so we know what we're dealing with. Was well, that going to hurt my credit? Yes and no. It is going to hurt your credit because it's going to be a soft inquiry. I'm not sending it to a million banks, shooting it all over the place. That's what lowers it. But if I do a soft inquiry, and they see a couple of inquiries. They know you're in the process of buying something. So it's not going to dro drop your credit from a 700 to a 500. Not unless you are doing inquiries on everything every single day. That's how you're going to ruin your credit. Have an idea what your credit score is. Credit Karma. Discovery has a program. Most... Credit card companies have that. At least have an idea. It's not going to be accurate, but it'll be close. Because there's three different ty types of credit in out there. Your auto history, that's got a credit. Your mortgage, and then your consumer. Your consumer is going to be the main score that you know. My home credit score could be higher than my consumer. My auto could be higher than both of them. That's the credit. Your consumer is kind of a combination of them. It's your combination of scores. At least have an idea. Now, if I come back to you and say, oh, Mr. Smith, your credit score is great. Let's go pick out a vehicle. If I also ask you, Besides the trade, how much money are you putting down? Don't get all defensive. Well, I don't want to put anything else down. Bank rates have gone up. Banks are looking for money to guarantee loans. Now, if you have a lot of money down on a trade that's worth $10,000, yeah, they're not going to ask for that. 
But if you have a trade that's two, three thousand dollars, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna put it through as that. But the bank might come back and say, "Well, you need you need another two thousand dollars." Don't get mad at the salesman. The salesman wants to sell you the car. The bank is looking to secure the loan a little bit better. I'll tell you a little a little funny story. I had a customer that came in through the internet, going back and forth for a couple of days, and he's like, I'll be down on Saturday, and we'll look at the truck, drive the truck, and see what we can do. Okay, great. He gets down, I, I put him, in, I put him in, in, in the truck for him to drive. I look at the trade while he's driving, and I'm like, nice truck, and I get everything, I get the payoff. He goes back. Now, my mistake was I didn't ask him what his, how his credit was. Okay, a guy drove two hours south, so I figured this guy has some decent credit. Assumptions. Yeah, you know how that works. But that's okay. The guy's credit score was low, very low. Okay. Here was the beauty of it. The vehicle he was on, the trade value, had such equity in it, it lowered his current payment by over half. The bank said yes. Because they see his payments here, this is where his new payment is. I made the money. It was just his life got involved and he was looking to do the right thing by getting rid of some debt, decreasing debt, and he did. And you want to know something, he called me up, he's like, Chris, thank you so much. That happens. Customers will call you and say, thank you. You got me out of a bad situation. I am now striving. I am now moving forward. You know, sometimes it's just that little thing. Salespeople are here to help. They help to facilitate the purchase of a vehicle. You can't do it on a website. You you need a salesman to work for you, and that's what we do. We work for you. We might work for the dealership, but we're working for you to sell you a car, and we do everything we can to to sell you that car. Salespeople got a bad rap. We're trying to change it. If we don't change it now, dealerships are going to become obsolete at, at some point. But how are you going to start buying your cars? This will be something for another video. You could say, oh, well, Carvana, Fair, so many other um, sites that are out there. Okay. Who do you talk to? What's the interest rate you're going to get? I've looked into these. Just out of curiosity. And these are all pre-owned vehicles. That you have no idea what somebody else did with these cars. I was looking. And. I couldn't find a car fax on any of them. That scares me. As a consumer. As a salesman that scares me. Should scare you. As a consumer. But that's enough of that. That is a topic I will get to at a later date. Please like, share, and leave a comment. Tell me what you thought of this video. Tell me if it was too much of a ramble. Tell me if you found it informative. Also, leave a topic of what you may want to see in the near future. Okay? Yeah. Um, please, I will be seeing you guys later. Have a great day. Be well.